Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Thank you so much for joining us for another amazing interview. Now, hopefully you locked in, you've caught up with the interviews we've already done. If not, catch up, set your notifications so you can catch all the future interviews. Today, we have an, another amazing supporter who is in the tribe, in Tony Gaskins Academy, named Mika. Mika, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. So thank you so much for joining me today and just for taking up this offer because we're getting to meet amazing people and every story is just good to hear what people are doing, how they got started. And so I really appreciate you taking out the time. Now, where are you based at? I'm from Louisiana, but I'm based in Houston, Texas. Okay, from Louisiana, based in Houston, Texas. And now what took you to Houston? <laughs> the Lord, <laughs> being obedient to the Lord. He told me I was going to have a house of prayer here. And that's exactly what I have. <laughs> okay, now it, it, did you move at the time of the hurricane or before or after? So I've been here like two years and maybe four or five months. Um, so I came, it was after the hurricane. Now they just had a storm literally like three days ago. They just had a tornado that ripped through houses. Um, people's roofs are gone. Some people are still without electricity here, but, um, thank God I'm safe and sound. Wow. In Houston that happened? It happened outside of Houston in Cyprus. Okay. Okay. Wow. That is, oh, you know what I did see? A guy in Texas cutting a tree off of his car or off the top of his house or something. Yes, a lady died. She left um she left her kids and her husband inside, went to move her vehicle, and a tree fell on her and killed her. Mm. Mm -mm. Yes. Ooh. Serious. Wow, wow, wow. My goodness. Well, okay, so you've been there two years and something, and now, how did you find me and Tony Gaskins Academy? When was that? That was about 2019. Um, oh. I actually was going through a hard time in my life. The algorithm brought you up. I started watching your videos, and um, it's like a daily ritual now. <laughs> wow, okay. And I could hear that Louisiana accent. You hit a New Orleans in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is very, very unique. Just anywhere in the world, we know New Orleans. Or, yes. you know, that accent. Now, the whole Louisiana doesn't have the same accent, do, do mm -mm, they? No. Mm -mm. Just, just that certain area. You from the New yeah. Orleans area? So I'm, I'm from River Ridge, which is very small, but it's only like 20 minutes outside of New Orleans. Okay, yeah. So basically, same thing. Yeah. Okay. And now today, what is it that you do? So I actually am a federal contractor with the United States Postal Service. So the Lord brought me from food stamps to six figures in my first year of business. And um, it's just skyrocketed since there. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. you say a federal contractor with yes, USPS. Yes, sir. Okay, now tell tell me about that and how that works, you know, being a federal contractor, because does that mean federal contractor, does that mean the government gives you the contract or is there like another company or service that you can get the contract from? So, you know, it's real trendy right now. Everybody's talking about government contracts, but this is like its own little niche, its own little entity. So the United States Postal Service has rural contracts that are available for individuals or businesses to bid on. Once you bid on it and you win it, then you would basically hire your own mail delivery carrier. That person is going to do just like my mailman, just like your mailman. They're going to deliver that mail for six days a week. But with this, they have to answer to me. They're supervised by me. They're trained by me. And so they will pay me for five, six, seven years to handle the responsibilities of that route. Mm. So you still, so you have to go hire people. You got to find people 
that are trustworthy and accountable and reliable to deliver this mail. That's right. So I recruit my staff and I maintain my staff. Now they have other people that, you know, they want to do it themselves, have at it. Um, so you're able to keep more of the profit. But once you get more than one contract, you have no choice because only um, even if you're going to if you're going to work your first contract after you get that second, third, fourth contract, you need a staff member because they all want to start around the same time in the morning. So you wouldn't be able to work multiple yourself. Mm, I see. I see. And now how long have you been into this? I have been into this since 2020. Mm, okay. 2020. okay. 2019 or 2020, one of those. <laughs> okay. And so now did you hear about this online or were you Googling? Were you just thinking like, or you just looked up government contracts? Listen, so... Um, I was going through a divorce and I was praying to the Lord that he would help me to be able to take care of my two children. And the Lord told me to get an LLC. I was obedient, had no idea what I was going to do with it, but I took the steps. I got it done. Then he told me to build business credit on it. This was before business credit was real trendy on social media, you know, because business credit has been around, you know, decades. I started to show my results on Facebook. People started to reach out. One guy that reached out, um, we used to attend the same church and he was getting these contracts, but everything pertaining to the contracts he was putting in his individual name and not his business name. So he needed me to help him to get business accounts. And I asked him, instead of you paying me, can you show me how to do the paperwork for these contracts? But I would never bid against you. And so he did that. And um, two months later, two or three months later, I won my first contract. And ever since then, I quit my job and only work for myself. <laughs> Look at that. Now, yeah. listen. Now, listen. Sometimes people be saying, oh, God did this. God did that. And I'd be like... <laughs> I feel like he ain't living for God. But when I hear that, that sound like God. Oh he did it. When I tell you he did it, Mr. Gassens, like if you only knew what I was going through at that time. But as soon as I separated myself from that relationship that was not God ordained and I submitted myself unto the Lord, it's like the heavens opened above me, literally. Hmm. And that right there is something that's good because. Ooh, that's heavy because the person you separated from didn't get to go into the promised land with you. No. And I think a lot of times we try to hold on to somebody, but really they're not intended to go into that next season with us. And no. we know they ain't fit to go, but we hold on to them just because of the history and the chemistry or because of the haters and the naysayers. We don't want nobody to laugh at our failure. But you let go and literally let go and let God and then was ushered into that next season. Yes. And, it's, and it's one of those things to where it may not always be lucrative in the sense of it can change with the economy and with the seasons and with the demand. You talking about the contracts? Yes. Um. So the way that I teach it, it better always be lucrative. It better okay. always be lucrative because, you know, we have these residual bills, right? So we need that residual income. So the way the post office does it is that, let's say, um, I'm going to use my last contract numbers, um, so real numbers. The contract is worth either 486, somewhere between 486000 to 491000 That breaks down into an annual payment amount of $81,000 which breaks down into a monthly deposit of $6,750. The only time that that would shift is when I request an increase. Now, if I request the increase and the economy has shifted and now milk has went from, I don't know what milk is because I don't drink it, but let's say it's $5 right now. It shifts from $5 and goes to $3. And I ask for an increase, then they're going to say, no, we, we've made the adjustment, but it's a decrease. <laughs> you declined. But if milk goes from $5 to $7, then that $6,750 probably will turn into around $7,000 per month. And that's per contract. 
So if you're a person that knows how to manage money, well, let me not even start with the money. It's more of a ministry for me. I feel like it's very dangerous to teach people how to obtain wealth and don't give them a foundation of Christ. So if you're using this money to give the glory to the Lord, if you're using this money to help build up the kingdom of God, I feel like there's never a downgrade. God is just not in the business of downgrade. I just don't believe that. I never believe that. So um, yes, this is a very lucrative and um, profitable business. And the goal is to get multiple contracts. So you should always see a profit. Mm, I see. So it's basically, and, and the reason why it doesn't necessarily go down is because your contract is for a few years. Yes, all of mine are seven years. So seven years, that's a blessing, seven years. So that gives you some time to settle in. That's right. And to know what you got coming in. That's right. And I'm sure they set the pricing to give the economy some room to move without them having to be keep adjusting you every other month. And, and that's the thing. They're not going to set it. You're proposing a bid to them. So before you propose that bid to them, we're doing a cost worksheet. But this cost worksheet is going to include the vehicle depreciation that you need to you know, run the mail around the community. It's going to include the gasoline. It's going to include the amount that you're pay paying your employee. It's going to include the amount that you're going to get paid to supervise these people. Um, so everything should be accounted for before you come to that final figure that you present to them. Mm, so you present the figure. So now what happened is you present this figure that's, let's say, 485000 for seven years. And somebody else could have said, hey, I want 600000 for these seven years. And, and that's how you win it because your bid came in still realistic and you make money but you beat out somebody who was being greedy? Now, this time I'm going to win it now. I'm going to push my plate back. You see, <laughs> I need the Holy Spirit to tell me. You don't know if you're bidding against anyone or if it's just you bidding. You don't know that, right? So I need the Lord to give me some guidance on these numbers here. Like, that's how I do it. I have to get my thoughts, my intellect out the way. I have to get the opinions of friends and family out of the way. And I got to hear from the Holy Spirit. Like he'll show me on a billboard. He might show me my dream, whatever the case is, you know, but I'll just have peace about that number because it's not necessarily the person that's going to have the lowest bid that's going to win. It is, I feel like um, this business here has been around about 30 years, but we were not privy to this information. So sometimes you're bidding against a family member. Sometimes you're bidding against an in-law and a cousin, and they've called in a good word. The postmaster or the supervisor has called in, you know, oh, this person is great. I think they should keep their contract. And the corporate office at the United States Postal Service, they, they don't know what's going on, you know, at the local post offices. Um, so it's going to take some favor from the Lord. It's going to take some favor. And so... Um, you are going to also have to sell your business, sell yourself. So there are questions that you need to explain. What have you been doing the last few years? What do you know about transportation? What do you know about logistics? What do you know about carrying the mail? And that's where I come in at. Um, I mentor people and give them a great understanding of what this business is, the pros, the cons, the highs, the lows, you know, everything that they can be prepared um, to submit their bid, um, and have a good, I, I have a good rate of success. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now let me ask you, in the course of a week, how much time do you spend, you know, doing your paperwork, like doing the admin of your business? Because, you know, you're in there, you're hands on, you know, you, you're working because you got to deal with numbers. You got to make sure people get paid. And so it's not like you just get the get the contract and then just kick your feet up. You still, you know, dotting your T's, I mean, dotting your I's and crossing your T's. About how many hours a week do you dedicate to it? Not much. Um, so my people are paid a daily rate. OK, so I know that if it's let's say it's 26 days, because the only day they don't work are federal holidays and Sundays. So I know if it's been 26 days omitting the Sundays, then that's 
Um, once they pay me at the end of each month, I'm just going to zell them over their, their portion. Um, I'm also going to send them money for gasoline for the vehicle. Um, and also a bonus. I like to give my, you know, I like to be good to my staff. Um, and that's basically the totality of it when it comes to like weekly or monthly duties for me. But I want to stress this, um, and people don't like to hear this when I'm mentoring them or whatever, but a lot of things I feel like are without toil because of what I dedicate my life to. So I feel like it would be different if I was taking this money and I was taking care of a man. If I was taking this money and I was going and I was, you know, out at the hookah bars and I was getting drunk and I was, you know, doing all these worldly things. But I feel like because my life for the most part is dedicated to building up other women, building up even men, um, you know, and then having just prayer nights at my house, prayer calls. I have one tonight. That's why I'm trying to get on here. Um, because my life was dedicated to the things of the Lord, I feel like then it kind of obligates him to take care of those things for me. You know, so um, I don't like people to think that, hey, you know, she says it's so easy, this and that. Well, it, first of all, as with anything, I had a season of building. I had a season where I was running my own contracts. Um, but once I figured out what my purpose was, once I let it, let the Lord, um, really work his ways in me, you know, and I'm, that's still the ever going process, you know, delivering me, um, that's, that's really why I can say things come with such ease. Mm. That's, that's my belief. Now, let me ask you this. Now, when you apply for this first contract, you had your LLC, but did they have to check your business credit or that that was just something you just was building business credit because you started the LLC? But is it based on your credit? Do no, they do sir, it's credit? not based upon your credit at all. Oh, okay. It's not based upon even if you have an LLC. Okay. So you don't have to bid under your business name. You can bid under your personal name as well. Okay. And the reason why I ask that is because, and I know the people watching want me to say, they want me to ask you, but no, I'm not asking her what site you go to to bid because that's y'all got to connect with her and get her, get her a little fee. And then she will take you to the site and tell you how to bid for your, you know, city or what have you. But so no, I'm leaving that out there on intentionally, Mika. But now I want to know what brought you to the Lord because you know, you got that sauce on you with them baby house laid down and lashes. So, you know, you could be out there in the world if you wanted to, but you saying God every other word. You real serious about That's the Lord. Right. So That's what right. brought you to that? What brought you to the Lord? What was that straw that broke the camel's back that just made you say, you know what? I done did it my way. I got to do it his way. Yes, I'm glad you brought up the physical appearance as well. See, my my stylist, they're young, and I have asked her to stop putting her baby hairs on me. And even I promise you, I promise you, on my counter was a pair of short eyelashes. I never have on lashes. If anybody look at my Instagram page, I never wear lashes. I don't like it. I think it's tacky. To be honest with y'all, I don't like looking like an eagle by the eyes. So I brought this very short pair and I forgot them this morning. So I had to use what she has. But this is normally not how I look. This is my first time even wearing red lipstick. You know, if I wanted to give a little pop for y'all today. I'm a very conservative, classy woman. Um, and I pride myself on that. I gave my heart to the Lord um, because I was going through something that I couldn't handle. Um, in my marriage, I was married to my pastor's son. I didn't understand the difference between religion and relationship at the time. Um, to get out of that marriage, I had to build a relationship with the Lord. I had no choice but to fall on my face. No choice. And so he brought me to the end of myself. And then I'm just like, okay, God, God I don't want to submit 50%, 70%. I want to give my life to you. And, you know, people like, 
you are crazy. Like, what are you, like, the things that I do, I'm one of those people, I believe in walking on water. I believe on, in running on water. Um, so even like when I moved to Houston, it was strictly because the Lord told me to go. You know, even, um, even the Lord was saying how you couldn't be received in his own hometown. And it's the same way. You know, so God brought me amongst people that wanted more of him. Um, he also brings a lot of people that have been through the same turmoil that I have been through, that have been wrapped up in religion, wrapped up in abusive, toxic ways and relationships. Um, and so I didn't want the Lord to raise up a rock. I didn't want him to have to raise up a rock. I did it my way. There's nothing out there in the world. I don't believe in, you know, contamination. Like I'm going to fully submit unto you. So, yeah. So I know what I'm looking like, y'all. Y'all give me a pass. Y'all give me a pass. <laughs> well, see, the thing about it is one, one thing I really love about the Lord and what he did is the adversary tried to use somebody who a woman would think, oh, I got to pass the son. I got to pass the son. I'm finna be laid in the shade. I'm finna be married forever. It's, I'm finna be up under a man of God and being, you know, stewarded and taken care of and just doing right. And then here it is, the path the son turn out to have his own struggles that he didn't win. And then that affects you. But then the Lord give you the strength to move on with your life. And then the Lord shows you that, no, the lie that you was told in the church that if you get a divorce, you're going to be cursed the rest of your life. That's not true. You, my daughter, I love you and I'm here for you. I'm a refuge and who you was with was not who I had for you. And I'm going to show you that by taking care of you and your children through this here blessing I'm going to put in your life. So that's amazing. And back to what we was talking about now, if somebody wanted to do this in their city, do you think these government type delivery programs are in uh, most major cities? So they're in every state but it has to be in a rural area. Um, so that means like it's never going to be inside the city limits. So it's oh, never it going to be in Metro Atlanta. No, sir. It's not going to be in Houston, Texas. It's not going to be in Miami, Florida. It's going to be on the outskirts of that. So you're going to be seeing pastures. You're going to be seeing cows and owls on mailboxes, things like that, um, because they have regular mailmen to deal with the inside city limits. Now, the great thing about it, because they are rural routes, we drive the entire way. You're not walking any portion. You're always in the vehicle unless you have to get out and bring something big that they've ordered to the door that can't fit in the mailbox. Mm, yeah. Okay. Now, I want to say one more thing, Mr. Gass, is that you touched on that I don't want to just skip on by. Because a lot of people are afraid um, and they get used to certain things used to a certain way of living um, because of familiarity. It is when you believe God for the unusual, the extraordinary, is when he's really able to come in and blow our minds. I could have said, the church did tell me, you know, you're never going to get married again and if you do he gonna do you 10 times worse and the lord you know he's he's not in divorce now it was okay he was he was in ob abuse and he was in infidelity but you know apparently he's not in divorce um and so you know i went through all of that word curses being spoken over me and things like that not having people support but if you have god you have all you need and I'm telling this to you now as a 41-year-old woman with two children. I've never seen a dollar worth of child support, and that's okay. I do not have to rely on government assistance. My children eat well. They're homeschooled. I eat well, too. Y'all see. But <laughs> they're homeschooled. You understand? I do not want women or eat, not even men, because men go through abusive and toxic relationships as well. They have single fathers out there as well. I don't want you to put a limitation on the Lord. 
We sing these songs, we quote these scriptures, but then when certain situations come up in our life, we no longer apply them. Believe God for the impossible and he shall surely do it. He'll perform his word. Mm, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So now this was encouraging and inspirational, but for it to be practical, I'm wondering how many people would you be willing to help if they can, you know, invest in the consulting? Would you be interested in doing some one-on-one -on -one consulting or group consulting? You kind of almost got to do it one-on-one -on -one because people's cities and states is different. I'm pretty sure the stuff may be very similar, but would you be open to doing one-on-one -on -one consulting and stuff like that? Okay, so um, I've mentored people with this probably for like the last year and a half, two years. I have clients that have won from California all the way to New York, back down to Florida, up to Maryland, you know, um, because everyone completes the same packet. It's the same. The thing about it is, is um, I started a nonprofit to where we feed kids and have the school program in Houston. And that's really where my attention is going. But it's a lot of people that do reach out to me via Instagram. Um, you know, my reels have went viral and listen, the exposure just came without, without much of me even expecting it really. Um, what I did was, was created an ebook. The ebook is the contract pages stroking, stroking down into eight by five, you know, letter size, eight by five by 11 letter size. And it is filled in, it's filled in for them. Now you need to have a, remember last time we talked, we were talking about an online course. Yes, but the ebook, I said, okay, some people are visual learners. The thing about it is though, you need to have a business acumen. If you are a person and you can't read to comprehend, you're a person, you don't want to pick up a book. You don't want to learn what it is to give out superior customer service. You don't know what it is to show your staff by example, you know, how to uphold the standards of the USPS. This isn't for you. But you, you are a person and you're looking to do something different. You're looking to believe the Lord for more. Um, and you're looking to make that sacrifice because like I said, it's a season of building. There was a time when I first got my contracts, I ran the first one, the first three months myself. I ran it myself until I got the hang of it, until I got me a new home, I furnished it. And then after that, I was able to get full-time employees. So I don't want people just saying, oh, it sounds good, this and that. Pray about everything and don't be anxious for anything. Pray about it. Ask the Lord, is this an opportunity that can bless you? All right. So I have the ebook. When it comes to the one-on-one -on -one consulting, um, my time is limited. I'm going to tell you now, my prayer is to make seven figures without toil. That's my prayer. So Mr. Gaskins was saying my feet, you know, by my feet not being kicked up, they, they are, <laughs> they are. <laughs> they be crossed by like 2 p.m. <laughs> but um, I do love to help people. I love to, um, to see people win. But with that also comes scammers. With that also comes the people that you mentor the most. Though they'll be the ones to do the chargebacks. So I am very um, limited on the spots that I give out for that one-on-one -on -one mentorship now. Mm -hmm. And that's smart. That is smart. I got a I got a client who is like that. She know everything in the world, and she really don't for the same reasons you are not that open to it. So I, but I love the ebook idea. The ebook idea is great. You have it somewhere where they could download it. And, and like, we yes, can, sir. So link the, is it my I get it from oh, you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get it from you. Okay. So we will put the link in the description box of this video. So y'all can go download the ebook. Now I put you a good price on that ebook now. Put your good price on that ebook, Mika, because I don't want you giving away for peanuts. Because what people will also do is they'll get the ebook and they'll upsell it. They'll sell it for more than what you're selling it for. And they'll act like they're the expert. 
And so you didn't been in here, you didn't put the work. So we'll talk about the price that you need to charge for it before we put the link out there. Because your audience, one thing, and they done already got it. But this is something that I think that people who are going to do the work, you've been doing it for some time and you smart, you savvy. So you can kick your feet up by two o'clock. The average person ain't going to be able to kick their feet up by two o'clock. And the reason why I say that, because I know a lot of people who get into a nice situation like this, but they think stuff come easy. Oh, and, yes. and they be lazy and they don't have customer service. They don't want to do the paperwork. They don't want to, you know, do the billing, do the payments and, you know, treat people with respect. They just want the money. And so that's, that's right. why I wanted to make that point of after you have worked and you done grind because you did your own contract for some time. And same like with me, I, I work 10 hours a week of work, seven hours a week. And I earn a million plus a year, but I had to work 80 hours for some years and to get to that place. And now I coach, even though I charge, I'm losing money on them coaching calls just to touch people. Even like right now, I could charge thousands, you know, for promo and all of that. But I do it at an affordable rate to be a blessing because of the space that the Lord has me in to where I don't have to just worry about every dollar and I could be a blessing. And so that's the space that you in, but I, what I want people to realize is to get to that space, you got to be diligent and you got to be focused and you got to really put in that work. And so yes. and it's a processing, it's a processing. So when my first contract came, they basically sent me to KKK land. You know, they were not accustomed to black and brown contractors. And then on top of that, you're a woman as well. So they literally were trying to run me out of there. You know, and I'm just like, Lord, what is going on? Like, I thought this was a blessing from you or whatever. The Lord used that situation to process me. So now I don't carry that bad in my control no more. I don't have that road rage no more. Now when, you know, clientele is doing chargebacks or whatnot, I'm going to do what the words say. The words say the blessing. Forgive them seven times 70. So you have to be processed. Know and understand when God allows those things to happen, it's because he's trying to work something in and out of us. So yeah, go through your process, go through it well, so you don't have to keep repeating that season. Mm, awesome. Well, I thank you so much, Mika. I'm going to get that information. Y'all look in the description box and you will see it. And thank you so much, Mika, for joining us and blessing us. Gave us a word, some inspiration. I'm actually thinking right now, who do I know that can do this and really be serious about it? Because I got guys that are hard workers and they truck drivers mm -hmm. and they might not be making what you're making. And so they could get them contracts and they live by the rural areas that they could set some stuff up and get them rural areas taken care of or at least bid on them and try. So thank you for that. That's inspirational. You're it's welcome. Lesson. And this is the kind of knowledge that I want in this series. You know, everybody I'm talking to, we're getting some good stuff. So thank you so much. Thank and you for having me. No problem. We definitely may have to bring you back and talk a little more about this. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. All right, y'all. Make sure you take and hit your notification button. Catch these interviews same days of the week, same times. Lock in, connect with the individuals. You might even want to wait sometimes to see a couple just so you know who you want to connect with. So you ain't, you know, running with your head cut off somewhere. But God bless you and we'll talk soon.